Hello, Jaime. How are you? Good evening, teacher. I'm fine. Thank you, teacher. And you? I'm doing great. Are you ready to relax tomorrow? Tomorrow, relax, yes. Because it's Independence Day. Correct. Independence Day. And what about Friday? Are you going to work on Friday? Uh, no, teacher. No, uh, Friday. It's Mr. President, he say Friday is, is uh, in, uh, staying home. <laughs> so <it's the> same <laughs> no working. Yeah, no working on Friday, right? Yes. But I, all the people that are in the restaurants, hotels, the food, the supermarkets, they have to work. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have to work. Yeah. But the other people, ah, we relax. <laughs> relax. Yes. Okay, good. Now, we're going to take a moment before the other people get in. It, we're going to make small partners. And the idea with our partners is, is only talk about your plans for tomorrow. What, what do you want to do and what are you going to do? The two questions, what do you want to do and what are you going to do? Okay? Okay. Mm -hmm. So only a few moments, very quick. Well, and that way we can get warmed up. All right, guys, go for it. Make the groups and let's do it.
Okay, great. So now we have an idea. We're talking, we're speaking. Today, we want to focus on also pronunciating correctly. So we're going to listen to stress and rhythm. In this moment, 3.10, stress and rhythm. This is where to have the in go up or go down with the intonation. Pronunciation, stress and rhythm. Part A, listen and practice. Notice how stressed words and syllables occur with a regular rhythm. When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. Hello everyone. Now that you have listened to the previous sentences, try to give the right stress and rhythm to the following ones. Then, play the audio program to check on your pronunciation. Listen to the stress and rhythm in these sentences. Then, practice them. After the ceremony, there's a reception with family and friends. Before the guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. The guests usually give money to the bride and groom. Okay, let's practice those words and make sure that we are correct. So it says, after the ceremony, there's a reception with family and friends. So let's try it. After the ceremony, there's a reception with family and friends. Okay. Before the guests leave, the bride and group give them presents. Before one more time. Before the guests, guests before the guests leave, leave the bride and groom. The bride and groom give them presents. Give the presents. Okay, good. The last one. The guests usually give the guests usually give money to the bride. Money to the bride. And groom. And groom. And, okay. Good. It's okay, the vocabulary. Do you understand the words? Guess. The guest, the guests are the people that are invited. So when you have a party and you invite the people, they are guests. Yes. Um, Maria, it's okay? It's okay. Sit, teacher. Thank you. Okay, good. Any other questions? Groom. Groom. So when the person get married, dun, 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 the man is the groom. The woman is the bride. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Any other words? Okay. So let's take a look at the next activity. So here is our objective. Mercy, can you please read today's objective? Oh, yes. Um, yes. Uh, by the by the end of this class, you will be exposed to a verbal clause of time, what they are and they use. Good. So now we know we're going to learn how different things about the time, adverbial clauses of time. Let's learn a little bit what they are and how to use them. Hi, I have a question for you. What is an adverbial clause of time? I'll give you a hint. An adverbial clause of time can't occur alone as it needs a main idea. Stay around and listen to the explanation and follow the examples for better understanding. Adverbial clauses of time. When people get married in Japan, they sometimes have the ceremony at a shrine. After the food is served, the guests give speeches or sing songs. Before the guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. Okay. So here, 
all of the it, things that indicate a event or the order is the adverbial clause of time. It's not a complete sentence, but it helps you to understand the ideas in order. After the food is served, ah, do you understand the order? Before the guests leave, ah, do you understand what happens? When the people get married, do you understand? So remember, when? At the same time. After, for example, the class finish at 10. After the class is 11 o'clock. Before is at 8 o'clock. The class is at 9 o'clock. Before is 8 o'clock. These are to help us organize the activities. It's okay, the adverbial clauses of time? Yes. Is to organize, is to help us organize. After, before. Before. Okay. Correct. When, the same time. After, later, before, previous. Before the guests leave, the bride and groom give them presents. We're going to break this for you so you may understand it better. There are many types of adverbial clauses, but in this session we want you to learn about adverbial clause of time. Let's define what an adverbial clause is. An adverbial clause of time describes or defines the when something happens. Adverbial clauses of time are easy to identify because they begin with a subordinating conjunction. For example, when, after, before, since, until. Copy, copy, copy. You're going to need. Write it down. Copy yeah. it. You're going to need to use them. Remember, make sure you understand the different times. Also defines the when something happens. Adverbial clauses of time are easy to identify because they begin with a subordinating conjunction. For example, when, after, before, since, until, while, whenever. We invite you to ask your teacher to give you a list of subordinating conjunctions as a reference. You may be wondering what does a subordinating conjunction do? A subordinating conjunction joins two sentences, one sentence being called dependent or subordinated and another sentence being independent or main clause. As said in the intro video, an adverbial clause of time can't occur on its own because it makes no sense. It is not complete. We will take a look at some examples. Once you see them, you will know what we're talking about here. When she comes home, she will read a bedtime story. Let's analyze this sentence. When is a subordinating conjunction or adverb. She is the subject, comes the verb. Now, when she comes home, altogether is a subordinating or dependent clause, meaning it is not complete. It depends on some other idea. You expect more information. She will read a bedtime story is a main clause or independent clause, meaning it makes perfect sense alone. What we're doing now is making a more complex sentence. Let's work with another example. Before she went to school, she finished all her homework. I will give you a couple of minutes to break down this sentence. Try to do as we did on our previous example. So let's do it together. Before, subordinating conjunction or adverb. She, the subject. Went, the verb. Before she went to school is a subordinated or dependent clause. And she finished all her homework is a main or independent clause. Excellent, well done. Before we go, it is important for you to know that an adverbial clause of time can appear either at the beginning of the entire sentence or in the middle of it. It is okay to say, since they got married, they have traveled around the world, or they have traveled around the world since they got married. The only difference is the use of a comma if the subordinating conjunction begins the sentence. Can you give us now two examples? Do so in our discussion box. Okay, so the most important is just putting in order the things. So. For example, when I say, hey, tell me about your daily routine. Do you already use? First, I wake up. Then I take a shower. Next, I go. Before going home, before going to work, I have breakfast. That's it. The idea is only talking about the order of the events. Okay? So in this moment, we're going to make groups and we're going to talk about it. Talk about your daily routine. 
use the adverbials, your routine for Saturday, Sundays, every day, but use it when, while, after, before, as soon as. For example, me, as soon as I connect uh, to my class, I begin speaking in English. Ah, maybe for you, while you are in class, you pay attention or you take notes. It's okay the different words? Yeah. Okay. Yes? Yes, teacher. Yes, dear. Yeah. Okay. So remember, talk about your daily routines. Use, use the different words to describe the orders. Only practice five minutes, not long, but only to describe, well, six minutes. Three minutes and three minutes to describe your activities. Sorry. Oh, what happened, teacher? Um, you didn't connect, Jose? Yeah, I, I lose my connection for a moment. Okay, okay, no problem. I put you into a different group. It's okay. Oh, great. Okay, one moment. Let me put you in another group.
Okay. Any questions? It's okay. The orders? It is clear because uh, I'm using vocabulary easy uh, when, after, before, while, uh, until, since. Correct. The, the vocabulary is easy. It's only not confused because many times the people confuse before, after, when, what confuse the meaning. So the vocabulary is easy, but not confuse the vocabulary. Okay. For example, Mercy, in, in English, what is cuando? Cuando in English? When. Good. Noe. Después in English. What is después? After. Jaime. Uh, uh, antes? Before. Super easy. That's it. Uh -huh. and, uh, okay. He's not with us. Okay. No problem. <laughs> I, I thought maybe a question, but no problem. No problem. Okay. So now we're going to continue. And we're going to practice answering or completing the statements. Here we have different words, before, when, right after. So now we understand the meanings. With the partner, we have six sentences. You read and you select the correct answer, okay? This one, only three minutes. Nothing, nothing money, no. You know, you know, you know, three minutes.
Okay, let's take a look. Rodolfo, give me number one. Uh, read the, the, the question. Yes, please, and the answer. Before a man and woman get married, they usually um, uh, give the bride and groom a gift or some money. Okay, don't worry. We're going to check. Everything is okay. Number two, um, Noe, number two. Number two is when a couple get, get in jail, the main often. The answer is give the woman a diamond ring. Okay, pronunciation ring, diamond ring. Ring, ring. okay. Good. Walter, number three. The number three, right after a couple gets engaged, they usually begin to plan the wedding. Okay. Um, Carla, number four. Number four, when a, a woman gets married, her family usually pays for wedding and reception. Okay. Jaime Hernandez, number five. Jaime, you're on mute. You're on mute, Jaime. Sorry, teacher. Uh, when people are invited to a wedding, they almost always pay for the wedding and reception. Okay, okay. And the last one, who, who wants to do the last one? Number six. Right after. Oh. Go ahead, Mercy, it's okay. Right after a group gets married, they usually go on a short trip yeah, called right. an honeymoon. <laughs> Honeymoon. 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 Okay. Not so bad. A little mistakes, but let's take a look. All right. Let's go. The first one is not correct. We say the bride and groom give a, a, a gift or some money. Remember, the man is the bride. Sorry, the man is the groom. The woman is the bride. What do they do before they get married? They usually date. They usually are boyfriend and girlfriend before they get married. Okay. Hey. Number two was correct. Number three, after the couple gets engaged, is they begin to plan the wedding is correct. Number four, the woman gets married. The family usually pays. Excellent. Number five, not correct. When people are invited to a wedding, they almost always give the bride and groom a gift or some money. If you go to a wedding, it's normal that you give a gift. Not normal you pay for the wedding. You give the gift or some money to help pay. Okay, this one. And then number six, they go on a short trip called the honeymoon. It's okay? Okay. Okay, teacher. All right, excellent, excellent. Now the next objective is about reading. We're going to practice this one, a little bit of reading. And let's see, Maria Singuenza, can you please read the objective? Okay, this, in this class, you will practice your reading skill for better understanding scanning for specific information and understand reference words. Good. This means with your partner, the two, you and your partner together are going to read. If you want, you can make it bigger or you can make it bigger here. The two partners are going to read, but you also have to understand the reference. For example, them, this means Paragraph one, line two. 
So here I go to paragraph number one. Here's paragraph number one and line number two. I, when I read with my partner, I have to say, ah, them. What is the them? The them is people, animals, or protection. The same for the other, all of the number six, one through six. You and your partner have two activities. One, read the article. Two, identify what are the pronouns talking about. It's okay what to do with the activity? Yes. Yes? Okay. Yes. Read, discuss, identify the activities. What do they refer to? 